Guys, a 77 year old man who died defending, unallied rather, defending his ranch from Mosetas. This is a story that Mexican cartels don't want you to know about. Don Alejo was a 77 year old man when the cartel tried to bully and intimidate him off his farm, but they soon realized that he wouldn't go quietly and evoked. Dang, bro. You're trying to bully him off his farm? Yeah, a David versus Goliath story for the modern ages. Who is Don Alejo? Don Alejo did what the cartel never could. Is that really him? He earned an honest living. He was born in 1933 near Allende, Nuevo León, which is in northeastern Mexico and not too far from the Texan border. He and his brothers earned jobs as timber workers in the nearby city of Monterrey. He soon earned enough money to buy his own ranch. He struck a bargain and found a 200 hectare plot of land further east in Tamaulipas. It was a wasteland when he first bought the land, but he gradually transformed it into a rich and bountiful stretch of land. He named Ooh, this nice. ranch San Jose. After his father, yo, I do like how he constructed it. Is that really how it looked? Though? Land. He named this ranch San Jose after his father, Jose Gar. That's like one of the cities that uh that are around me, guys. Who taught him the meaning of hard work? Don Alejo had a love for nature and farming, but above all, he loved hunting. Yeah, grandparents are awesome, man. And was known for his incredibly accurate shot. He soon started a family, and with his wife Leticia, he had two girls, Marcela and Alejandra. Over the decades, the drug trade grew in Mexico, but by the 2000s, a brutal drug war was taking place between Los Zetas and their parent organization, the Gulf Cartel. The roads of Tamaulipas were suddenly dangerous places to be, as there were often robberies and... Dang, bro, all you had to do was leave the property, though, man. You know what I mean? This would have never happened, guys. But I guess he would rather stand his ground. Kidnappings for ransom. And then these drug gangs began their extortion rackets on farmers in the local community. The cartel would offer protection for a monthly payment, where the cartel was protecting farmers from the cartel. It was a nasty way of taking a cut of the hard-earned money from... I've actually heard uh, the same thing in that that freaking uh, mo the world's most dense in city, densest city. Thing, guys. Farmers in the local community. But occasionally things got even worse than that. The cartel would sometimes simply evict farmers off their property and transform their land into training camps and hideouts, among other things. Don Alejo was keenly aware of what was going on. He managed to live most of his life as a simple, hard working business. Yeah, did he have a, a movie made about him? This man who earned an honest living. Looks like it, guys, because that's no farm footage right there. Living. While El Chapo and other drug lords argued that he had no choice but to enter the drug trade, Don Alejo was proving them wrong. His friends found him to be incredibly hardworking and reliable, and remarked that a promise from Don Alejo was as good as a contract. He had escaped running into the cartels until he was 77 years old. On November 12th, 2010. Dang, bro. At 77 years old, he's... Getting trouble from the cartels, man. Ten members of the Los Zetas cartel came knocking on his door. At this time, they were- Bro, I'd be so terrified, man. We just recently watched a video of the cartel, like, uh, pulling up on some YouTubers, and they were shaking, and so would I be. One of Mexico's deadliest drug cartels, known for their torture techniques, murders, and beheadings. Let's just- Dude, that's so scary, man. Say that they weren't coming over to borrow a cup of sugar. The cartel knocks on- Bro, no. Borrow a cup of sugar. You know, I could see that happening, but it's never happened to me. On his door. The cartel explained who they were and that they were taking his home from him, but Don Alejo refused to bow to their demands. Hey, bro, just straight up confiscating the house, bro? What? So the men at his door gave him an ultimatum. He had 24 hours to collect all of his things and leave the town forever. This way, he could scrape up a lot of his precious belongings and avoid any violent repercussions. Dang, bro. But Don Alejo also refused this offer. The cartel then proposed a less generous offer. They told him that they were coming back that night. By then, it will be the cartel's property, and he will be a trespasser on their property. So, he will be killed. Whether he stayed that night was up to him, but one way or another, the cartel was coming. Don Alejo told them he was going nowhere, and that he would see them. Damn, bro. This is castle. The castle law. You know, this Texas castle law defense. This is the Texas t Castle Law Defense taken to the extreme, man. Later that night, as one of Don Alejo's friends, Weibo, had once said- I actually just watched a video, uh, er, like a few, uh, like, like last week or something, of someone doing the same thing, 
against the Cribs. Of the incident, he would never have worked his whole life to one day let someone take everything from him. That is not his nature. And Don Alejo was clearly aware that he simply could not just go to the police. In some ways, the cartels were the police and ran rural Mexico. To give you a quick example, Ovidio Guzman, the son of El Chapo, was arrested in 2019, but on the threat of violence from the cartel, he was suddenly released again. The cartel vastly outweighs the police in terms of its membership, weaponry, and willingness to cause violence. And this wasn't any cartel on Dang, bro, that's pretty scary then, man. I don't think it... I don't think the gangs in the USA outnumber the police force, do they? Maybe. His doorstep. This was Los Zetas. A year before they arrived, Don Alejo would have come across this news story. 72 immigrants from Ecuador, Guatemala, and Honduras were murdered in... Let me go uh, use the restroom, guys. Tamaulipas state in Mexico. The victims were murdered in an area of geography controlled by the Zetas, which... Wait, 72 of them? No way. Which is a very ruthless... What the heck, guys? ...ruthless and powerful cartel operating inside of Mexico. Don Alejo had chosen a battle not many would dream about. Don Alejo's secret stash. The cartel saw him as an old, feeble man and assumed that tonight's work would be relatively easy. What they didn't not with not with what they described him being, guys. No, is that Don Alejo has lived his entire life in fear of the cartel. He knew that one day they were coming, and the cartel had foolishly given him ample time to prepare. In his cellar, Don Alejo had a secret stash of weapons. These were mainly hunting rifles that you would expect any farmer to have. But Dang, bro. This is interesting. Imagine he called like a bunch of friends to help him. Like uh, the that one guy did. I mean, probably still not the best thing. I, what, he should have called like law enforcement, right guys? But living in rural Mexico, where the cartel could literally end up on your doorstep, he decided to buy his hunting rifles in bulk. <laughs> Don Alejo did the opposite of calling. Dang, bro. For backup. He had several men working for him on his farm, but he didn't want them dragged into this mess. He told them all to go. Okay, that... That's actually more logical. I mean, uh, it's not logical to do this. I mean, guys, I don't know what to think here, man. It's just... Not something I would do. I, I, would, I would leave. I would leave, guys. Go home and have an early weekend. He told them to take away all the livestock and take away any valuables that they had from the land. He didn't explain why and let them spend time with their families. Had he not made this move, those families could have had their lives ruined forever. Yeah, I'm glad he did that. I'm glad he did that, actually. Joaquin Estrada, a trusted employee. Because we, we don't want more lives lost here, man. I apologize. Employee of Don Alejo and close friend knew something was up, but agreed to leave. He would be the last friend he would bid farewell to that night. Don Alejo's final word to his friend that night was for him to go. Hey, what about his family, though, man? to see his family, waiting for the second call. The cartel had ambiguously told him that they were coming back later that night, so once the sun went down, he prepared himself for the worst, and he assumed that they would arrive at pitch dark rather than when nightfall had just begun. But before the sun went down, Don Alejo made a phone call. He called his wife and believed that this might be the final time he would hear her voice. You know what, my love? I love you very much, Don Alejo said goodbye. Oh, my love, me too, me more. His wife replied, Tomorrow, God willing, we are going to talk early. Don Alejo did not disclose the danger he was in, but promised his wife that he would call her at 8 a.m. the next morning. As nightfall loomed, he was now prepared for the attack. The hours went by, and as the clock ticked further and further. Okay, I wonder what movie this is. This can't be his house, right, guys? That's. This alone costs so much money to make, it could be, though. Further toward the sunrise, he probably assumed that this could have been. If it did look like that, I, now I know why they're trying to freaking take this property. An empty threat. Perhaps the cartel thought that they could scare the old man to leave his home and then just walk into an empty home the next morning. But at 4 a.m., only an hour or two before dawn, the cartel arrived. And they didn't sneak into that farm either. They began honking their horns, flashing lights, and firing their guns into the air. They were aggressively claiming their newfound territory. When the cartel heard gunshots from the house, gunshots that were not their own, they realized that this old man was not bluffing when he said that he would see them later tonight. They learned the hard way that a promise from Don Alejo was as good as a contract. The battle begins. Don Alejo was protecting his home in the same way that medieval soldiers would hold a castle. He boarded up the windows but left. 
castle defense, man. Have gaps for him to see out. He would have had a rifle and ammunition at each window and could attack them from all areas. What the cartel didn't realize was that Don Alejo was an incredibly good shot. His hunting days meant that he had a lot of experience instead of deer or yeah, bro. Elk, he was now hunting members of a dangerous cartel. His shooting was so accurate that he was outperforming members of the cartel. Had he chosen a life of crime, he could have been incredibly successful, but he chose an honest living and he was doing whatever. That's good, that's good, man. Whatever it took to protect the home and land he spent his whole life working on. His tactics were simple. Don Alejo would go to one window and shoot a cartel member stone dead. Then he would run over to another window and do the same. It was soon apparent that Don Alejo had just killed four cartel members. Dang, bro, this guy is freaking... He's been practicing for a while, man. And they had not even reached his home yet. The cartel retreats. At one point, the cartel decides to retreat. They had just lost four men. This guy's being a whole one-man army, guys. Like, he, he prepared, like, his life and stuff, bro. Th these kind of stuff... <clears throat> These kind of stuff do cost a lot, man. And this job was clearly not as straightforward as it seemed. They had three options. Their first option was to retreat from the ranch entirely. They could call it a day and realize that this wasn't worth fighting for. But if you're a cartel member and had to tell the leader of your cartel that you and several other people were too chicken to fight a 77-year-old farmer, your membership at this cartel might be under review. And the cartel doesn't just let its members leave and move on to another job. This but they took, about, took out four of them, bro. <clears throat> Second option was to continue fighting. At some point, hopefully, this old man would run out of steam. They needed to continue fighting, and someone would eventually shoot him down. But again, this option ran its risks too. What if they lost? What if this geriatric farmer managed to gun down this group of skilled cartel members? The cartel has gotten where it is today by fear, and the story alone would spread throughout Mexico and let communities know that the cartel was not to be feared. Instead, they opted for a third option. In their trucks were much more advanced weapons than guns. This cartel realized that they could not fight fire with fire but had to use superior weaponry against him and as we mentioned earlier the cartel has much more advanced weaponry this guy did not like the cartel man i'm just telling you straight up bro he, he was like yo don't he, he didn't even bother calling the law enforcement at all bro sheesh man then the police the final showdown the cartel came at Don Alejo's house with grenade launchers. With these weapons, they could attack him from a longer distance, where his hunting rifles were no match. And instead of trying to pinpoint exactly where he was, they simply carpet bombed his entire house with grenades. They killed Don Alejo, but were too cowardly to face him with a shootout. The sheer size and scale of the violence meant that this battle was now making waves far from Don Alejo's ranch. Mexican authorities believed that whatever was happening on this farm was too much of a job for the police. So the Mexican Marines arrived. And seeing that the Mexican military was now involved, the surviving cartel members decided to flee the scene. Unlike Don Alejo, they were not prepared to fight against a group with more manpower and better weapons. They had finally left Don Alejo's home. The fate of Don Alejo. The marines soon made their way towards the house. The violence had- Dang bro, it's like freaking- <clears throat> destroying it bro Stopped, like but they remained vigilant somebody could be hiding and ready to pounce at any minute on the outside of the house they found the remains of four dead cartel members there were also two other cartel members unconscious it was past 8 a.m and Letitia did not two cartel members unconscious what not receive a call from her husband as promised and you can only imagine the deafening silence that she felt as the phone continued to fail to make a sound she decided to break the silence and call him however this served only to make things even worse as there was no answer her imagination began running wild she assumed the worst she panicked. why'd he do it man he could have just not fought them bro you know how many members they have and stuff bro the whole army, man. And called Joaquin Estrada for any information. She called Joaquin, and their conversation, roughly translated from the Spanish, went as follows. Well, what's up, Joaquin? It is said that you noticed that there are many soldiers. And so? Well, there are many soldiers inside the ranch. Well, what about that? You go and see my husband to see how he is. Maybe the soldiers went to do some inspection. It's just that he doesn't know how many there are. There are too many, and they won't let me in. No, tell them that you are their ranch worker, that they let you in, and then call me to tell me how my husband is. Alejandra did not receive a call back from Joaquin that day. Don Alejo had managed to hold off a pack of gunmen infiltrating his house, but grenade launches proved too much. The Mexican military found his body and was simply gobsmacked that the opposing side against the cartel was one man and several hunting rifles. He was a man who earned an honest living, and when the cartel came calling, he refused to back down. The only way that the Hey, the cartel did take a hit right there. The cartel could defeat him was to take the coward's way out and fire grenade launchers at his home from a distance.
Don Alejo's legacy. Los Zetas controlled a lot of the media, so the story did not make any newspapers the next day. Don Alejo had humiliated the cartel and they did not want anyone to know about it. However, the newspaper Milenio decided to publish Don Alejo's heroics and let the people know about just how cowardly this criminal gang had reacted. And the cartel may have had control over the newspapers, but they could not control social media. Eventually, the news of Don Alejo spread and he became a cultural icon. The fact that the cartel tried to quash this news only made the story spread even further. They Days before Don Alejo was killed, he brought his wife a rose bush in a plastic. Okay, is there even like <clears throat> controlling the media as well, bro? I'm, I'm terrified of them, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm scared even reacting to this video, man. Bag. He told her that this way he would not have to go to a florist and buy her roses, but this bush will provide her with an endless supply of them. And after his death, this rose bush was planted at the ranch. This way, Don Alejo is still providing roses for his beloved wife long after his death. Mexican journalists like Denise Marquer and Quiro Gomez praised him as a hero. In Mexican culture, there is a popular musical tradition known as the Corrido, which is a folk ballad commemorating heroic actions. The singer... Like legit, I'm scared. <clears throat> I'm I'm terrified of reacting to this, guys, because I don't want them to hurt me, guys. So please don't come after me, cartel, for reacting to this. Miguel Gastelum, El Patron, has a corrido about Don Alejo, with the lyrics translate as, You were a very good hunter, and a very accurate shot. In addition, a great gentleman, a worker, a good friend, upright, and a man of honor. His tale also provides a grim reminder of Mexican society. If one of my elderly relatives had a group of thugs threaten them on their own doorstep, I would hope that the police force would be capable of sorting the situation out. Clearly, in this case, he did not feel like that was the best option. His daughter told news outlets, He told me he'd gotten threats, but he didn't notify the authorities. He never trusted them. And this is the sad reality that Don Alejo's family, friends, and workers have to live with. To add insult to injury, his death has not been properly investigated, and the cartels continue to be above the law. At the beginning of this video, I compared this battle to David and Goliath. And there's no doubt in my mind that Don Alejo is a hero, and his courage was of biblical proportions. But if you look at the bigger picture, he is simply a hero in a society full of villains. In the play Galileo Galilei by Bertolt Brecht, one of Galileo's pupils says, Unhappy is the land that breeds no hero. Do it. Yeah, guys, I'm sorry. I just don't want to disrespect them, bro, because I'm scared of them, guys. So I apologize if I'm not talking that much during this video, <clears throat> this reaction. Galileo responds, no, Andrea, unhappy is the land that needs a hero. In a properly functioning society, you should not be forced to fight off a cartel to protect your home. This yeah, he was ready to fight fire with fire. <clears throat> But that makes me never want to visit Mexico, bro. Straight up evicting people? Like, sheesh, man. I'm scared. I'm scared, bro. <clears throat> There's recently in the news that the cartel actually... Um, you know what I mean? Like, this video. Four YouTubers murdered by Mexican drug cartels, bro. I am good on that, man. I don't think I said anything that disrespected them, though. But yeah, guys. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Check out the original video in the description. I'm not going to read the comments because, you know. Not, not, not in this video. Later, guys. Sorry, guys. Don't want to, like, uh, I'm scared to react to this cartel videos. It's just, um, yeah. Something that frightens me, man. Later, guys. Later.